Hey everyone, Voivod Kahootek here with a quick walkthrough on creating a battle map for your D&D games in Foundry VTT. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using the latest version of Foundry, that's version 10, build 284, and I'm using a clean install with no modules added. Um, if you're familiar with Foundry, you may know that there are a lot of modules you can add that significantly change the behavior of the program. And um, some of them would actually make this process a little bit easier, but I want to do a video with just the basic stuff so you can see what it looks like to do it um, regardless of what modules you have installed. Let's get on over to the virtual tabletop. The first thing you're going to want to do in Foundry is come over to the top of the dialog box here and click into the scenes tab. In D and D, you'd call it a battle map. Uh, in Foundry, they use a sort of system game system agnostic terminology. Um, so it's a scene, and we'll click the create scene button. Give it a nice descriptive name that I can remember when I want to switch over to my game. And then if you go down to the second section here, background image, we're going to real quick before we grab up that background image. I am going to click into Worlds, and then the world for this, which is FVT Tutorial, and into the Assets folder, and Scenes, and this is where I'm going to want to put the file. You can put files, you know, sort of willy-nilly in Foundry, but it gets messy real fast, and it's good if you're a little careful about where you go with things. I'm going to choose my map, and it's got that, so we'll select File. And then another thing I want to do real quick while I'm here, since I'm also going to show you how to set up lighting, is crank the darkness level up to 1. Now we have the navigation to come over here. You can see it's nice and dark already. Um, I'm going to give you just a brief run through of this map that I'm working on so you understand the context of what I'm doing. Uh, from left to right, there's a sort of tumble-down guard shack, a central entryway with a teleportation circle, and then some flooded caverns that act as another entryway into this room. So, it's a little tricky to see with the darkness level up, but I don't have this map matching. Let me shut down the darkness real quick so you can see. There we go. So you may notice about two of these map squares are fitting into one of these. That's not the way we want it. So we're going to want to adjust the size of the map or the grid. I think the easiest thing to do in this case is to cut the size of the grid in half, but you could also double the size of the map. There we go. With that done, we're looking good. Let me just turn down the lights again. All right, now in this state, if I drop myself in here, can't see anything. So let's give me a little light to work with. Come down here to the light bulb. I'll drag out this radius. I want it to be about like that. And then double click on the light bulb. Uh, I'm going to narrow it a little bit because I want this place to be sort of gloomy and dark. Let's give it sort of an otherworldly cast to the light. And then click over here into light animation. And let's give it sort of a dome effect. All right, so now you can see I've got this kind of nice tight light circle that I can see in. And let me reset the darkness. No, nope, that wasn't necessary because it wasn't clicked into me yet. So you can see I just can barely see what's going on. So like any good adventurer would, I'm going to spark a torch by going into token, light, and giving myself a 40-foot dim radius and a 20-foot bright radius. All right. Now that's good news. I can see around, but I can see through the walls, and I certainly don't want my player doing that. So let's go to the fourth one down, wall controls. We're going to use regular walls, but I'm going to show you another couple wall types once we get this all set up. So, if you just drag out a wall, then you get a line, you can move them around. 
But the way to work with a map is you hold the control button and you just keep dragging. And I will come across my doors. I'm going to show you two ways to handle the doors. But let's keep going through here. I got a little extra node on my line there, but I'm not super worried about it. For these little sort of fingers of wall, you can drop one. And then if you go back and highlight a node, you can drag out from there and keep working your way around. When you hit the edge of the map, like I did just a moment ago, it's going to drag with you. So you don't have to worry about repositioning the stopping and repositioning the map. You can just pull the line to where you want it to go. Again, got a little bit of a finger of a wall there, so I'm just going to double back to this node. Keep dragging them out. Show you doors another way here by leaving a gap there. Oh, and I didn't do that the way I'd want to do it, but that'll give you a chance to show you how to fix it. So you really want to make sure your lines are connecting and you can tell that they're going to connect by the fact that the uh, dots at the end of the line get bigger. I'm going to back this one off so that I have that dot right in the middle of the doorway. Oops, try that one more time. There we go. Drag it into place. And I'll do the same thing down here. All right, so we got our walls up can see that they're starting to restrict our player's vision a little bit. Now, I can either go into walls, go to door, and come through and draw the door that way. So now that field of view is completely blocked off from my player. Let me refresh the darkness so you can see what that looks like. See, now that room is fully obscured. The player is able to go over, pop that door open, and get a nice view of what's going on in there. The other thing I can do is if I just want to go around with the regular walls, I can double click into a wall and turn it into a door. Now, obviously, I don't have map this way, but I do like the fact that it marks this as a door for the players. So I'd still make it a door, even though they're not actually going to be able to pass through. But we'll lock it so they can't click it open and find that there's nothing there and embarrass us horribly. All right, and I'll lay in one last door down here. There you go. Got that door in place. Ugh, I can't leave it like that. It's bothering me. Let's straighten things out. Got it. Okay, and then the other thing I want to show you in terms of walls is terrain walls. So terrain walls don't block the vision of an area, they just block vision through the area. So I'm going to take this crate that I've made over here and put a little terrain wall around it so it'll block line of sight and light. And then I'll take a goblin and hide it behind that. All right, so now my player has their vision. We have a nice dark room with walls blocking lines of sight. They can go in and see, look around, find some stuff. And if they come over to this cave, you'll see we've got some water. And what I'd like to do is throw an ambient sound effect in so that it gives them a little bit of a sense that they're treading around in water. I'm not gonna do this for the full area. I'm just gonna do this for the entry. And now when I walk into that area, I get a water trickling noise. And I pass through it, it'll turn off. And if I weren't being lazy, I'd go ahead and set it up for the entire area. But for now, I'll just leave it there. 
And uh, the next thing I wanted to show you is the effect of that terrain wall. You can see I can see a crate as I step into the room, but I can't see the goblin behind it. I'm going to have to walk all the way around to get to the goblin. All right, so that's a brief tutorial on how to set up walls and lights, a little bit on character vision, and a little bit on ambient sound. All right, I hope that tutorial was useful and will get you started creating maps for yourself in Foundry VTT. Uh, I think as far as Foundry goes and virtual tabletop goes, rather, that Foundry is really one of the best on the market right now. Uh, for ease of use for creating this sort of thing. Uh, later I'll come back and we'll do some videos on modules and other content. And if there's anything particular you'd like to know how to do in Foundry, give me a shout in the comments below and let me know what you're looking for because I'd really like to continue creating these videos and create videos that are useful for people. Uh, you can find us over on dungeonsports.com if you want to see some of our map assets or take a look at any of the games I run. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Have a good rest of your day.